Um, what we're seeing is the emergence of a new kind of economy, a networked economy which um, is frankly fundamentally challenging because it has a much lower price point. Tim said early on in this conversation that, um, it, that the movement really doesn't matter until there are economic interests at stake and the economy begins to shift. And I, agree, and, and, and I also want to zero in on something that Ben said, which is that the movement's going to be most powerful if it's decentralized and organic and, and sort of persistent. Um, and something that, that Larry, dis, Larry said, which was that the movement... Um, it, you know, the, he described the progressive movement as a series of connected but sort of loosely coupled uh, movements. And I think that's, the, that's where we're headed. But to bring all of that together, um, think about a number of the innovations at, on the Internet that <clears throat> have begun to reshape the economy around the notion of peer-to-peer -peer services. So whether it's uh, in lending, in finance, in housing, Airbnb, in transportation, Uber or Halo, um, or in education, things like Coursera or Skillshare, um, what we're seeing is the emergence of a new kind of economy, a networked economy which um, is frankly fundamentally challenging because it has a much lower price point then uh, it is fundamentally challenging to the incumbents, the incumbents who are, for the most part, um, large you know, bureaucratic hierarchies that provide the same set of services in a more costly way. And those services, because they're so well connected, are working on ways to resist that, the emergence of this new economy. And so you see fights like the fight that Uber had in D.C. or the fight that Airbnb has had in New York or the fight that Coursera had in Minnesota um, where the incumbents are suggesting actually proactive changes sometimes to prevent the emergence of these, these new, new models. Well, the, the technique that has been working is when these networks, which in, by their nature enlist a lot of consumers who gain a lot of benefit from these new services, when those new networks um, reach out to their consumers, as you saw Uber do in D.C., you get a, a, a political reaction that counters the weight of the insider, uh, insider money. And I think it, it becomes sort of um, obvious to the city council in D.C. that this is not going to go quietly um, and that if they favor the existing incumbent taxi industry in a way that disserves the community that they're, that they're actually voted in to serve, um, that there's going to be a reaction. And I, and I think that there may be a way to weave a thread between all of these what appear to be different local contests, whether it's um, you know, education in Minnesota or transportation in D.C., as one theme that is very closely tied to what Larry brought up at the very beginning. Um, and so how do we use that new economic force um, use the connections that they have to their consumers to begin to, um, you know, sort of um, solidify this movement and recruit these users as advocates um, to, to, to actually bring voting pressure uh, uh, from the outside uh, on this existing regime.